Okay boys, it is BBFC here and today we're going to be looking at the ultimate team deep dive for FC24. Obviously, I am an ultimate team creator, so we're going to be looking at the deep dive. I'm going to be discussing my thoughts and we're going to be talking about the beta rollout as well because I don't think it's very good for a game that's effectively been out for the last 20 years and that has been in the public eye for the last about 10 to possibly 15 years. That's not an open beta, but we'll get into that when we get into it. So of course, without further ado, let's go straight in and have a look at the beta in question. We've got the Ultimate Team Deep Dive. I'm not watching the video because I've seen the video. It's not very good. It's EA Marketing Mumbo Jumbo, as you would expect, but we'll have a look at the stuff that's been provided to us. So Evolutions, of course, Ultimate Evolutions are a new system which you can upgrade players with certain objectives. Obviously, you can see here these objectives here. They've used in Kunku for this example. Sorry, Makoko, not in Kunku. If you could evolve a Kunku, that would be quite good. But there are requirements, which is a bit of a shame. I, I think the requirements are going to limit and they're going to have given people a false sense of hope for what you can do for evolutions, you having to be able to only evolve common gold cards, for example, or only certain rated cards because of these requirements. I don't think it's a good idea. And then points or coin requirements, of course they will, because they need your monies, apparently. They are that money hungry that they've now bought it into evolutions, so they are pay to win. Thank you, EA, for bringing in something that nobody asked for. Pay-to-win evolutions. It's just so stupid. But challenges as well. Win 10 champs matches with the player. Play 5 games with you, score. I hope that the challenges can be good. Like, it's skill moves, work rates, play styles, alternate positions, and weak foot. As well as new visuals, and hopefully other stuff as well, but yeah, throughout the season, there will be things, and you can see at the end, you get new images and whatnot, which is a bit silly, can I add an evolutions player to the transfer market, no, you can evolve one player at a time, which is quite stupid, you can switch back and forth between your evolutions freely, if you're working on a silver player, don't want to bring them in your champs matches, you can switch to more, probably evo player, what happens if I switch which evolutions? I'm working on your progress is saved. So, you can't use them in SBCs either, but you can use them once they're upgraded. Do they have time limits? Yes, Evos have time restrictions. If the evolution time was out, you'll only upgrade to all the levels you've completed. You'll be not. So, why are they limited? Which is a bit silly. Why are they limited in time? That is probably another thing that we need to know is why are they limited in time when, you know. It's not like EA are going to give us much other content. They need to allow us to evolve the players as we go, not as they see fit, because my evolution, I might not want to do in a day, but little Jimmy, who sits on squad battles for the next five hours, he might want to evolve his player in a day. I think that evolutions should not be locked. I think you should have a max set of evolutions per player, but they should not be limited to the amount of time that it takes to do them, because it's ruining the feature already. It is a unique item type, and there'll be an overhead indicator for upgrades. Okay, so that is a bit of an L, but we knew most of that already. Like, they've made that pretty clear in their marketing. Women's Football Ultimate Team. I'm not going to speak about women in Ultimate Team too much from a personal standpoint. Five new leagues, yada yada yada, all that. When men's and women's will be on the same pitch, of course. Chemistry will work like this, so you can link the James siblings by club. You can't link the, and nation. You can't link them because their name is James or anything like that. So, for example, Sam Kerr will link to Nkunku, but he she won't link to Harland. She will not link to Harland, for example. So the ratings will work, yada yada yada. It's just not very smart. And then player ratings in September because they can't give things to us now. Play styles. Again, play styles. New dynamic for Ultimate Team goes beyond overall ratings. Each of the play styles affect gameplay. Play styles are going to change how you have a look at items. Play style has play style plus. 
We're not going to look at the gameplay deep dive. Ratings are not final, of course. Post-launch updates. The best players will have playstyles plus at launch. More versions of players with more diverse playstyles in campaigns throughout the year. So, again, I think it's a bit smart that they're limiting the amount of playstyles that are coming. But, at the same time, if they need to be optional. Like, I think they should be in packs. I think they should be in packs and you should be able to put them on certain players. That is just me. Objectives. Objectives are one of the most popular and engaging modes. No, they're not. You just make them that way. With all the great content in Ultimate Team, it can be hard to find what's right for you. Objective groups will now be organized across multiple tabs. Hopefully, they will be. Like, just because it shows like this doesn't make it a work. Claim all is there as well. So that is quite good because there are countless numbers of pointless objectives that, you know, we just don't enjoy that we want to claim all straight away. But community improvements chat we really value our players and the feedback you all provide yes you 100 percent value me and my feedback and we draw a lot of inspiration and prioritize ideas it was important to dedicate time to tackle some of those questions quality of life changes and improvements please keep sharing your feedback because it actually does not do anything i know a bit of a sad state to say but it really doesn't do anything i know so they've changed the item design, 30% more space for photos, because we really asked for that. Congratulations, EA. We really don't care. But you can see the card there, and it still shows the stats. So, yeah, but that's just an example, of course. New player layout, wider items, special enhancements. The Nike promo will be coming as well in the first week of the game. Position modifier removal and club search. So now you can switch players. As long as it's an alternate position, like Mbappe, for example, if you want to play him at striker, but then you change your mind and you want to play him at left wing, you can do that without using position modifiers. So, yeah. Club search. Speaking of SBCs, they're removing the lone players from SBCs, which is nice. And the default search includes primary and alternate positions, which is quite smart, I believe. Obviously. Icon changes chemistry and versions. I don't know if I like that they're removing the prime and the mid icons. I feel like that was kind of a fun part to the game. It just allows them to make more money from packs because they can put more icons in packs. I think it is another marketing ploy. But there will be people that go, oh, it's cool, it's cool. No, it's not. It's not that cool. Like, they're going to be millions of coins anyway. Like, just give them as, as SBCs. Hopefully they don't change that sort of model. But one icon in packs throughout the whole year, the icons are better be fairly rated then. I don't want to see a 86 rated Hiero, for example, as his best version throughout the year. I hope that his base is out of the picture and it's either his mid or his prime, and then you expand on that throughout the year. Like Zidane, for example, that's his mid that's being used in the section there. So, yeah, that's good. Item improvements. We don't really care for kits or TIFOs, but now you can apparently apply them straight away. And then the menus as well. Again, the menus are really just not really a quality of life update. I just don't think they're that important. Like, they were fine the way they were. They're just trying to make things look a lot better than they actually are because the gameplay is going to be tremendously bad and we're not going to enjoy it. And they are going to mask over it by saying, but look at the menus, look at all this that we've done for you. When in reality, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're trying to get across. And then, of course, squad battle match length. It's the year 2023, and they've finally realized that squad battles matches should be four minutes a half. They feel too long. I think people have said that since the dawn of time. It's just... Whoever works in the squad battles department is too lazy to dial down a couple of notches and, you know, too lazy to get... They're too lazy to put the squad battles down. So that is that. But, yeah, that is all the ultimate team deep dive. Now, I'm going to sit on this screen and I'm going to chat about the beta because obviously the beta has been released today. If you're from the US or the UK and you've got your emails on from EA, check your emails. You may get a code. One of my friends got a beta code. I don't even know what he got because he sent the wrong screenshot. But you don't just get 
full access, you do get limited modes, and I think it opens up over time. But some of the codes weren't even for FIFA or EAFC, they were for PGA Tour. So, yeah, the more you know. I think at this stage, they've been releasing betas and they've been pl releasing games for about the last, what, 15 years essentially now? They've been releasing Ultimate Team. And they've probably been releasing betas for this version of Ultimate Team for the last six, seven, eight years. They need to move away from the limited beta. They need to make an open beta. They need to allow more countries to play it, especially where there's servers. I get that maybe they're not going to have full capacity, but you need to open it up. US and UK is not enough of a player base to get a feedback, like there's plenty of people in other countries, in other regions, that I'm sure would like to provide feedback, and I'm sure obviously there will be players from other regions that get it, secretly, I won't name names, but you'll get it somehow, surely. But I just think that open beta should be a thing for pretty much every game, like you should be able to test it before you play it, and you see what happens, obviously it won't be final, we know that, but we want to see the gist of everything. We want to see how things look within the game. And we want to be able to play the new modes. We want to see how they work. And we want to see how things are. Even if they're shortened, like evolutions, for example. Even if the evolutions are shortened, if they're made easy. So we can see how they work. That is my last bit of advice with this because of course i just don't think that in 2023 2024 we should be releasing betas that are limited to specific people if you turn your emails on and if you live in these countries you will get it everyone should get it that's just my view but hey that is it for the video if you're enjoying the content hit the like hit the sub we'll try and release a few more things as we build up to EAFC, and I'll be back again sometime soon. Peace.